everyone and welcome back to another palateful packs video my name is monique renee today i have got the palateful petite box it is a lovely chilly january morning and we are going to open her on up oh my gosh guys we have got daniel smith watercolors i have wanted to try dan smith watercolors for so long and i've just never kind of I just never bit the bullet and bought any. So we have two colors right here. We have Rose of Ultramarine and Mayan Blue Genuine. And I'm so excited. Look at this cute little sticker. It's a little kitty cat and it has a little palette packs box and she has a little, little hat on. This is so cute. This is going right on my sketchbook. Oh my gosh. This feels luxurious. Okay, so this is a little palette and these little tubs are removable so you can fill these with paint and then kind of rearrange them how you want them to fit. And like I said, this feels like, it feels really nice. We've got a paintbrush, of course. This is a size six Sterling Studio Round. We have got two surfaces in this box. They are both trading card size and I actually love using this size. We've got some watercolor and we've got some illustration board and they are both by Strathmore. And of course, we've got our info card too. All right, let's take a peek at our info card here. There's actually some really cool information about these paints. So this is the Mayan blue. So apparently this blue was used by Mayan people and the color has like faded over a thousand years. Like it was hard to find, hard to replicate. Um, but I guess Dan Smith has used methods like derived from ancient Mayan chemistry is what it says here. Um, they've been able to kind of recreate it. So that is really fascinating and a cool little piece of art history right there. This is a purple color and I'm actually really, really, really excited to try this. Um, it was used using like a mix, quinacridone, I think that's right, quinacridone rose and ultramarine blue. So it's a purple and I guess the colors almost separate as the color dries and creates this like dimensional purple color. So I'm very excited to try this. What we're going to do is we're going to take these paints and squeeze them into our cool little portable Palette. And I'm going to try out these colors on these watercolor boards and see if Dan Smith is really as awesome as I've heard. Okay, so to begin, I am going to unscrew our little paint tube and I'm going to carefully just dab a little bit into the palette. So because this is tube watercolor and not pan watercolor, this color is super, super pigmented right out of the tube. So to use this, we're gonna dilute it a lot, but that means that we only need a tiny bit of paint in our actual palette. The cool thing about these two is that once the paint dries, it can be easily reactivated with water. So you're not gonna waste any paint in your palette if you don't use it. That's one of the things I love most about watercolor is that you can just reactivate it and use it again and you don't have to worry about wasting anything like you kind of have to do with acrylics. So I've got my two little colors right there. That also means that these tubes are going to last five ever. It is going to take me so long to get through this entire thing. All right, so I have a damp brush here and I'm going to just dip tiny bit into the paint so I have just the smallest amount on my paintbrush and I'm just going to start laying it down and that is an absolutely beautiful color. Going to do the same with my blue. These colors are fun. These are not colors that you usually see in a pack like this usually you get the kind of the usual red yellow and blue the primaries so it's fun to kind of mix it up a little bit and try a color that's a bit more unusual now there are a few different ways we can kind of approach an actual art piece 
We can do something that's monochromatic using only one color and kind of using the entire spectrum of that color, or we can do something mixing the two together. And I'm not sure, I think I'll do both. <laughs> Again, that's kind of why I love this size so much is because you can just bust out like a whole bunch of little mini paintings and try a whole bunch of new techniques without having to worry about like filling a whole entire canvas. I did use the watercolor paper for these swatches because we've got 10 sheets of these, but we do also have this illustration board as well. It has a smoother finish and it is like thicker. I also noticed here on our prompt list, we've got ocean, flowers, twilight, and still life. So I think I might do an ocean piece and I might do a twilight piece. So I'm just gonna play around with these and let's see, let's see what we can make. All right, so the first thing I wanted to try was an ocean theme and for some reason I really wanted to paint a jellyfish. So I painted a jellyfish. Now I do want to kind of walk you through my process here. The first thing I did was I did some wet on wet techniques and that is when you take your paintbrush, you dip it in your water, you kind of paint with the water on your canvas and then the paper is already wet so when you dip in the watercolors it kind of like spreads out and I like to do this when I want like a really blended wash. So I wanted the background to be a very light pastel mix of both the colors so I did that wet on wet technique with very very light washes of paint on top. And this gave me just a really nice background to kind of work with because I like to layer the paint one layer after another. So doing this gave me just a nice little background to start off with. After that, I took a pencil and I just very, very, very lightly kind of sketched out where I wanted the jellyfish to go. And then this part is very important. I made sure that the canvas was completely dry before I went in with the paints again. If you don't let it dry completely, you're going to have that feathering out again. And the jellyfish, I wanted it to be, I wanted like very crisp lines where the like head of the jellyfish is. I didn't want that to feather at all. So I made sure that the paper was completely dry. Then I just went in with that beautiful, beautiful purple color. Oh my God, guys, I am actually obsessed. I. I'm in love with this color. It's so beautiful and it really does. When it dries, you can kind of see it granulates in a way where it kind of separates a little bit, the, the red and the blue, and it just, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm obsessed. This is my new favorite watercolor. I'm, oh, amazing. Anyway. I went on a bit of a tangent. Um, what I did next was I started doing the little jellyfish tendrils, tentacles, I don't know what they are. Um, and I just kind of, I wanted it to like start and then feather out. So I did the dry technique again where I took the color and I just placed it onto the dry canvas. But as it goes out and spreads out is when I went in with the water again to kind of feather it out. When that was semi-dry, not completely dry, but not completely damp either, is when I went in and added some contrast. Now, I think this is really cool. <laughs> when your canvas isn't completely dry, you get only a little bit of feathering with the watercolors. So it's not totally a wet on wet technique, it's like a wet on damp. And you can see some areas are more crisp where the paper was drier and some areas are more feathered where it's more wet. And I think this just looks cool and organic and it's not something that you can totally plan. You kind of just have to play around with it. Um, but I think it's so fun and it looks so cool. Doing different techniques with like wet on wet, wet on dry, dry on wet, etc. Um, it's gonna take a bit of practice to kind of figure out what works best. Watercolors is a super free medium and it kind of has a mind of its own so I highly recommend that you just try lots of different things. See what works best for you. You may not even like doing what on wick, it just depends. So definitely try lots of different things.
To finish up this little piece, um, I again waited for the whole thing to dry and then I just added some more little tenderly bits. And then this piece was done and look at that color granulation. I, oh, so beautiful. Anyway. I then went on and I wanted to do something else again and I wanted to use the illustration board. That last piece was using the watercolor paper so I wanted to use the illustration board for this one. And I did a lot of the same techniques where I started wet on wet and then I just layer and layer and layer until I was happy. For this one I decided to go with a galaxy kind of theme. Um, I liked the idea of like twilight, so I wanted to do kind of like a night sky-ish, um, but that red kind of makes it look not quite nighttime. And this is kind of just what came out. I didn't really plan this at all. Um, I had a plan for the jellyfish, but for this one, I was just kind of like, how many layers can we get going and what would that look like? So I basically just started out with again like the wet on wet and then I'd wait for that to dry and then once it did dry I would just go in with more layers of the purple and the blue and just mix them all together and it's, it created something that I'm actually really proud of. I love how this turned out. And basically it's just like five different layers of watercolors and with each new layer you can still see the layer underneath it peeking out a bit um, and that's because watercolors are like a translucent medium so you can layer them on top of each other and still see the layers underneath and this makes it really really easy and fun to build up like really really dynamic layers so when you look at this piece it's not just you know the one color it's the one color and all the colors underneath it um, and this was just kind of fun to just work on and layer and yeah. Like I mentioned before, these colors and these paints are amazing. I cannot believe I let myself go so long without trying Dan Smith paints, but I'm already planning on which colors I want to get next and which ones I want to add to that palette. Um, it's just, ugh, love them. Something else I did to, um, is I would dilute the paints like a lot <laughs> because if you take the color straight from the tube and apply it to the canvas, it's going to be very dark. Um, so what I would do is I would take just a little bit of that color and I would kind of lay it onto my palette and then I would take water onto my brush and then I would kind of dilute it there. And then I would also do a little bit of mixing on the palette too. You can use the palette for like other kind of color mixing. You can even use those little trays to mix your colors. I didn't do that too much because the blue and the purple are already kind of similar and I kind of did all my mixing on the canvases like themselves. The last thing I did was I took some of that blue and I took it right onto my paintbrush and I flicked it onto the canvas to create those cool specks. Then I was done. I love how this looks. <laughs> All right, and here's a final look at all of the pieces I made and all the supplies that we got in this box. I <laughs> loved these paints so much more than I thought I would. I, I knew that Dan Smith paints were cool, I knew they were awesome, but there is something so special about these colors and these paints that I am just absolutely in love with. So I cannot wait to add these to my watercolor collection. I'm definitely going to be using these all the time. I am so jazzed that we got these in these box and that I finally got to try Daniel Smith paints. I'm just, this was so much fun. This was such a nice thing to do on like a nice cool cold morning too. Just oh, loved, loved working on these. I'm also super excited to fill my little palette with more Dan Smith paints in the future. Thanks palette packs. You've absolutely made a convert of me. But that's gonna be all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out and drawing with me. As always, please tag us on social media with your own art that you've made. I can't wait to see what beautiful paintings you make with these awesome colors. Be sure to use our hashtags, Palettful Packs and Palettful Prompt. And if you haven't joined the family yet, do be sure to check out our link in the description below so you can join us for next month. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me, guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the month and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.